Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. It's that time of the weekend. Time to have a look forward to the weekend of Super Rugby action. There is just a couple of rounds remaining. This one is round 16 this weekend. There's just one more round robin round left after this weekend before it is crunch time. Playoffs are only two weekends away. That means one thing, and it's going to be very tense, it's going to be very tight, and it's going to be very interesting to see who snaps up those places in our pool conference play. That is very, very tight. We'll be having a, a gentle look through those as we make our way through the matches. Who's in the running to get those places? Who's out of the running and just looking to play the spoiler? We'll have a look through all of those. We've got a full round of nine matches Coming up this weekend as well for round 16. But before we get into our first match of the weekend, I just want to have another little rant about the media over this week leading up to these matches. Now, in the last uh, review of round 15, I did mention about how the media was talking the Lions down, saying it was a bit farcical how they had become the first team to qualify for the playoffs and that it, it made the competition in bad light given uh, the way that the conference system works and they didn't deserve it. All this sort of bullshit, which I completely, 100% disagree with what is being said. Now this week leading up to uh, this weekend's matches where we have quite a lot of crossover games between conferences. There's a lot of New Zealand teams playing Australians and South Africans and vice versa. It's all very mixed up. And the real talk going around the radio stations and media in New Zealand is about the lack of interest in this round's matches. Now, I couldn't really believe this when I heard it. I, I sick and took because it is just ridiculous that people can be saying this kind of thing two weeks out from the end of the round robins part of the competition and people are saying there's no interest. I mean, how stupid is that? The Blues are up for us against the Brumbies and if the Blues win this game... They could ultimately destroy the Brumby season because the Waratahs are right up their butts. Now we further on go on past that with the Waratahs playing the Hurricanes. If the Waratahs win that, not only could they possibly pass the Brumbies, but they could also knock the Hurricanes out of a wildcard spot. So many things could possibly happen. Doesn't matter if New Zealand teams are playing New Zealand teams. This whole thing about local derbies match matches being the be-all and end-all of this competition is utter rubbish. And it just goes to show the naivety and the short-sightedness of the New Zealand media about this competition, calling the Lions a joke that they've qualified first, complete rubbish, absolute bullshit, I cannot believe that, and now saying how there's no interest in this weekend, well I'm afraid if you have no interest in a competition just two rounds out from the end of round robin play, then I'm afraid that you cannot really call yourself a big fan of Super Rugby at all, it is just a joke, and I, I, I completely disagree with everything they are saying, and find it uh, quite embarrassing almost to think that that is the type of things that people talk about when there's so many more repercussions about a match like this than just the New Zealand conference. Big deal. Sure, it's big for the five teams in New Zealand, but there's so much more going on. There's all the South African sides. They're all vying for positions. All the Australian sides. So much could change there still in that conference. And I just find it ridiculous how they can stake claims to things like this over... You know, just because there's no local derbies in New Zealand, it's complete rubbish. I mean, look in Africa. I mean, there's not a huge amount of points sub, uh, separating the Stormers and the Bulls. If they go for a loss and a win, things could be really interesting there. And it's just the whole competition is not really all about New Zealand. And I find that really disturbing that the media here is so caught up in that kind of thing. But that's that. We're going to move quickly on because we've got a lot to go through. I just wanted to get that off my chest because I find it really, really annoying and frustrating when I hear that kind of thing. And there's so many good games this weekend as well. So let's get stuck in with our first match. was at Eden Park in Auckland, the one we just mentioned before, the Blues and the Brumbies. Now, this is the first match of round 16, and as I mentioned before, it's the first of many crossover matches this weekend. But, you've got to say, the points are so critical now. These two sides, different positions, but still will not want to lose any more than the other. The Blues, ultimately, their season and playoff hopes are well and truly over. When you look at them on the ladder, the Blues 
out of the mix, only on 30 points. You got the Highlanders in the last wildcard spot at the moment on 43. So they're gone, they're done. But still, the freedom that that gives a side we seen last weekend in their matchup, the Blues played in where they played the Hurricanes, match of the round, an absolute storming matchup, great watching, great viewing, and exciting. And I feel that that kind of freedom makes the Blues a much, much more dangerous side as well. With their playoff hopes gone and no pressure on them, they could cause the Brumbies some troubles. I think they're outstanding against the Hurricanes last weekend. The Brumbies. Now, we're going to talk about this quite a bit over the matches that the Australian teams are involved in, but the top of the Australian conference is extremely tight. Now, the Brumbies are in a massive tussle here. Equal points, actually, but with the Waratahs at the top of the Australian conference and a loss here to a team that's not a contender will be a huge, huge disappointment to the Brumbies if they do fall down and I wasn't too convinced about what I seen from the Brumbies last weekend against the Queensland Reds and the Reds look better and better but the Brumbies I just I, I just don't have that faith that they're going to get the job done and when you compare them to the Waratahs it's almost easier to say that you'd think the Waratahs may be the best Australian side now after having a real lull period they seem to be a lot better looking than the Brumbies at the moment but one week is a long time in Super Rugby so the first match of the weekend, Blues, Brumbies. I'm going to go for the upset because I really enjoyed the way the Blues played. They're still at home as well, which is a great advantage to them. Eden Park, hopefully a big crowd turns up and we have some fantastic running rugby of these dangerous players on the Blues side. I think they're going to topple the Brumbies 32-31 and it's going to be another absolute stunning matchup. And I think the Blues are just going to get over the line. The Brumbies need to find some form or well, their season could quickly come unstuck over these last two weeks. Following that one, we move over the ditch on Friday night where the Reds are up against the Chiefs. And this one is interesting as well for the overall scale of the table, especially for the Chiefs. But we'll look at the Reds quickly first. The home team, of course, with the advantage being at home. And I think the Reds have continued to once again improve. And I think all this new input of players that they've received, the likes of Houston, a few others that have come and made their way, the youth players coming up as well, has boosted this Reds team quite a lot. They're starting to look a bit stale, a bit of out of ideas, injuries are starting to take their toll, but they've come in with a fresh new look, and I think it's done them a world of good, and they're starting to look a bit dangerous for the future as well. When they start to pull up these young guys, it makes the team, when they can compete, and you go, oh, these guys are only like 19 or 20. You know, you think five years, three years from now, they could really start to hit their straps. It is a tough ask at this stage of the competition to come up against the Chiefs, but the travel will help the Reds playing at Suncorp. Now, the Chiefs, they'll be having one eye towards securing the top spot in the New Zealand Conference, but to do that, they need to win everything, and they need to win it all very comfortably. Of course, the Crusaders are behind them by just one point. The Hurricanes by two points. The Highlanders by only three points, all within a non-bonus point win of the top spot. So, for the Chiefs, this is huge, but I think they are really getting some massive, massive form. We've seen last weekend just how good they can be. Likes of Lowe, McKenzie, Cruden's back in the starting lineup. Donald is in just about the form of his life following 2011. You know, he couldn't even reach that peak again, but he's still looking so good for a man of his age. Their Ford pack is traveling fairly well after doing a good job with the Crusaders last weekend in Fiji. It's all pointing to good things for the Chiefs, and I think they're going to do quite well here against the Reds, who may give them a bit of a tickle up. A bit of a good start by the Reds. May see an interesting first 40 minutes, but I think the Chiefs are going to be ultimately too good for the Reds, despite them being at home. And for the Reds, what does this mean for them? On the table, they sit second to last ninth position in the Australasian group. Just three points above the four. So they'll be desperately, desperately keen not to take that bottom position in the Australasian group. Now for this one, I've gone for the Chiefs. Bit of a no-brainer there. Might score 39-17 to get the job done against the Reds. But very hard to beat at home, the Reds. And you've got to think they will cause some troubles 
at least for the first 40. Moving quickly on, it's over to South Africa at Emirates Airlines Park in Johannesburg. And we know who plays there. That's right. It is the only team qualified for certain into the playoffs. And that is the Lions. They are up against the Kings. Now, what do you want to do first thing after securing a playoff spot? Well, you want a nice game to really assert your dominance. And the Kings should be that for the Lions. As well as being at home, it should be an easy win over one of the bottom place sides. And when you look at the overall table where they are, the Kings equal points with the Sunwolves, but just gives a nudge over them. And look at their points difference. You, you look at the Kings here. They have conceded 575 points over their 13 games. That is a huge, huge amount. And it's a really, really tough ask for the Kings. The Lions, of course, already qualified. Two games to spare as well. One of the best attacking forces in the competition in form. And they're going to be nigh on impossible for the Kings, a team that struggles defensively to stop. We'll look at the Kings for a, a bit as well here because they did show some decent form against the Highlanders last weekend, but they just showed a real inability in two key areas. They couldn't play the full 80 minutes, and when things started to go against them, the whole team dropped completely. There was no leader to stand them up to, pick them up by the scruff of the neck and lead the team forward. They all fell away and it kind of just went like a pile of dominoes and they scattered all over the floor and really blew out what was a close game into a no contest. So I think it's going to be all bad news for the Kings. The Lions are a great attacking side and I think they'll take the Kings out 66-24 to in our third game of the weekend. Following that, it is Saturday night and we are back in New Zealand, AMI Stadium in Christchurch where the Crusaders are up against the Rebels. Now, once again, like we mentioned with the Chiefs, this is huge for the Crusaders. If they want to compete for top spot and not a wild card spot, they need a big one. Five points is the only answer that they can really accept going into this match. The Crusaders, I think, will be a lot better back at home after traveling to Fiji. Just didn't really go their way there. They made a lot of errors, unforced errors as well, that they'll really want to clean up. And the Crusaders being the Crusaders, they are a team that does quick, smart, fix those sorts of errors as well. They'll be better back at home, and they need to try and knock the Chiefs off top spot. The Rebels have shown the ability already in previous years and this year more than ever. The ability to upset even the best of sides in the competition. And they'll be showing that not only are they a threat to do that this season, their team has a lot of youth. Just like we mentioned about the Reds as well earlier, a lot of players have been playing for a long, long time. Their team is only getting stronger. And we've seen the season where at the midway point, they are really competing for that top spot, even taking it in Australia. Sure, Australia's not the strongest it's ever been, but it's great to see the Rebels up there competing and doing some good things. I think they'll find it tough against the Crusaders, who are a very professional side, and when when things get down to the tight and the, the real nuggety stuff, I think the Crusaders will excel. They'll be in their element in that stage. They won't do the fancy. They'll do the hard work. They'll get the job done, and they'll get the game won. I'm picking Crusaders 27-19 over the Rebels. And with that, I don't think they'll get the bonus point either, which could put them on the back foot if the Chiefs can do the job against the Reds, but it is still very very close. Also, the Crusaders need to watch out for the Hurricanes and the Highlanders, who are right on their coattails as well. Now, speaking of the Hurricanes, it's off to Allianz Stadium, where the Waratahs are hosting the Hurricanes. Now, this is my game of the weekend already. This is huge. This is massive. This is monumental matchup of the weekend. Now, both sides are in the finals pitcher. The Waratahs, of course, taking... Well, looking to take one of those wildcard spots. Technically, right now, there is three New Zealand sides sitting in wildcard spots. The Waratahs are right under that. So they need one of the New Zealand sides to slip up. And what's a better time to do it than against the Waratahs? If they can pick up the win, they could dash some big hopes for the Hurricanes. I think the Waratahs have improved dramatically 
over the last couple of weeks as well. And they'll be looking not only to take a wildcard spot, but they'll be looking bigger than that as well with their better form and some good performances, especially last week. I thought they they were pretty decent. After a slow kind of start against the Sunwolves, they really did get into their work and absolutely demolish them in the end. A, a good 60-minute period midway first half right to the end. They showed good good depth in their team as well, bringing on a lot of players who normally come off the bench getting starts. And I think the Waratahs were very, very strong in that matchup. Now, they'll want to step it up, and they'll want to see the Brumbies slip up against the Blues. And I think the Waratahs could snatch that chance, and they won't need to worry about a New Zealand side slipping up because they could ultimately take top spot in Australia. We'll swing the Brumbies will go from guaranteed uh, conference winners. They could drop right out of the wildcard spots completely. So much could happen this weekend. It's ridiculous what could go on. Now the Hurricanes, let's look at the other side of the ledger here. They're just two points behind the Chiefs. And I think both of these sides are in fantastically good form as well. They've built very nicely to the end of the season. Key men are doing key jobs. as Ralph Falau back at centre did very well for the Waratahs. And then we talk about the Hurricanes, where I think their key man is Bowden Barrett. I think he has had the ball on a thread over the last month, and he has to be one of the biggest threats going into this game. I think the Waratahs are a lot better, but do I think they can win the title? Definitely not. They're not up to that level, and that's why I think two teams who are on the on the brink, on the fringe of maybe doing something special, will have a real nut out here, and this one's going to go down to the wire. I think it's going to be ridiculously close, but ultimately, I'm going to back the Hurricanes to go across the Tasman and do the job 22-20 over the Waratahs. So while we're over there in Australia, let's head to NIB Stadium in Perth across the other side of the Wallaby Nation. And it is the Force who are at home against the Stormers. Now, the Stormers last weekend, they absolutely piled into action against the Rebels. And I'll be fair, I think they look bloody good as well. A big win here for the Stormers. We'll see them all but secure themselves a top spot in Africa 1. Later on, if the Bulls don't pick up, a full five points. So we'll see them guaranteed to take the top spot in South Africa 1. Now, the Force, on the other hand, they're in a battle with the Reds at the foot of the Australian Conference, as we spoke of before in the Reds matchup. They had a really heartbreaking loss last weekend against the Cheetahs, but they looked all right. I think the Force are another team that are, are teetering on their abilities to become a mid-table side after struggling down the bottom for so long. Now, they are three points adrift from the Reds, but unfortunately for the Force, I can see there's more chance the Reds are going to pick up a point or two than there will be the Force against the Stormers. The Stormers just looked too good last weekend. They looked clinical, they looked free-flowing, and they looked aggressive and attacking. And I think the best the Stormers have probably looked all season long as they had the big chance to wrap up their conference as well with the Bulls, the only team threatening to take that spot. My final score for this one is going to be Stormers 36, Force 15, and that'll be a big one for the Stormers, and that should wrap them up the conference. Okay, so we just talked about the Stormers and what could possibly happen if they get a win and the Bulls don't. Now it's off to Loftus first round, we go in Pretoria, where it is the Bulls in action, they are up against the Sunwolves. So now we look at the other side of the equation, if the Bulls don't get the five points, they cannot overtake the Stormers. Now ultimately the Bulls want the Stormers to lose, because then they can regain, and I, I just can't see the Stormers losing two games in a row. Ultimately if the Stormers win both their last two games, they will take the conference. They are in the big position, a nine point lead over the Bulls. So they need two five-point bonus point wins and they need the Stormers to not gain a single point if they really want to take it securely over the Stormers. That's a huge ask, but the Bulls, they're the only team that can stop the Stormers. But they are outplayed, completely outplayed last weekend, the Bulls, by the Jaguars, who were just too good in the rain. The Bulls really completely drowned in that weather and uh, the Jaguars showed a bit of form that we haven't seen from them for most of the season. The question is for the Bulls is, can they get that dry, hard ground that they seem to have been adapting to quite nicely and recreate that running form 
that they had earlier in the season where they looked really, really dangerous as well. We got some great runners throughout the team and they'll want to get ball in hand, running wide, making the big incisions through the Sunwolves. But it's all well and good to play that expansive style against the Sunwolves, but they are a team who loves to play that style themselves. And they're normally such a good team, so well executed at finishing and and getting the uh, chances over the line that it was a real shock to me to see how badly they played last weekend when they couldn't even finish their own dinner. They need to turn that around here against the Bulls if they want any chance whatsoever. It's a tough ask going to Pretoria against the Bulls where I think the conditions will probably suit both teams. Their open running game. Hopefully we see some more action from the likes of Yamada who has been, I think, one of the players this season for all competition teams. So hopefully we can see more of that from the Sunwolves. But I don't think they're going to be good enough to really tempt the Bulls whatsoever. 35-28. I've got the Bulls winning this one with the Sunwolves. Coming back with a late flurry. But the Bulls taking the points and possibly even the bonus point as well. To keep that African conference open for another week. Okay, so just two matches remain for round 16. And we're staying in South Africa. Kings Park and Durban. A real cauldron of Sharks Rugby there at Kings Park. And they're getting visited by the Cheetahs. A team who escaped jail last weekend with a one-point win. But I can't see them getting back into this match against the Sharks. A team, the Sharks, who were absolutely blown away last weekend by the Lions. I think the way the Lions played, their attacking plans, their attacking ability, and just how good they are at breaking the line and creating space was ultimately what destroyed the Sharks last weekend. The Cheetahs, I don't think they're going to offer that same kind of attack, that same kind of incision that the Lions did last weekend. I think that'll give the Sharks an opportunity to at least get into this match, and I think they should ultimately win it as well. Now, keep in the back of your mind here that the Sharks actually have the one wildcard spot in the South African groups. Now, all is not decided there with the Bulls only three points behind the Sharks. So there's a, a fair bit of incentive there to get the big win over the Sunwolves or the Bulls as well. Not only to try to stop the Stormers, but to take that wild card spot in the South African conferences. So that's where the Sharks need to get a win here. And they need to make sure that they keep that wild card spot to themselves. For the Cheetahs, though, they just need to finish strongly. They've hit a season that's been very, very up and down, inconsistent, like a tap, hot and cold all over the place. Close wins and losses, for that matter, against bad teams. But they've also shown that they can take it up a notch with the better sides in the competition, but they'll need to improve on that next year, and it could really lift the Cheetahs if they can build on the good points of this season this year. They need to finish strongly, finish on a high, and go into 2017 with their head up ready to improve and attack these conference systems and try and make their way up to a wildcard spot where they quit off the pace there. You look at the table, they're 14 points behind the Sharks at the moment, but you know a win against them could see them close that gap quite nicely. I'm picking the Sharks to win it 19-14 over the Cheetahs. One match remaining in the weekend, and it's off to the Buenos Aires in Argentina, where we have the Jaguars up against the Highlanders. Two teams that we haven't mentioned yet in a very, very interesting matchup as well. Now, uh, last weekend we saw the Jaguars with a very, very good win in the uh, atrocious conditions as well. They were great to upset the Bulls, and... I think they could do more. They could build on that. And that's what they need to do. They need to take that win. They need to take that confidence. They need to build it and make it something better. The Highlanders, as we know, their players are getting a bit of a hammering. Four players flying back home with injuries, missing these games. So a lot of their first teams, especially in the back row, will be out of action. The depth that they have off the bench will probably be a bit harmed by that. So what they need to do is... Make sure that their depth is able to withstand the test that the Jaguars could throw at them if the weather permits. We'll have a look at the weather at the end here, but first we'll have a look at where the Highlanders actually are on the table. And 
They're holding the final wild card spot, just above the Waratahs. Now, obviously, the Waratahs and the Brumbies matches could change that whole concept of that table where the Highlanders could ultimately drop out of wild card spot to the Brumbies and the Waratahs could go top, or it could stay the same. So much could happen. I've said it a million times here already. But the Highlanders, they need to make sure they keep hold of that wild card spot because the defending champions need to make their way into the finals. The Jaguars, I think they could do well here if they play a full 80 minutes. They don't get anyone sent off and they build on their form from last weekend. That could do them well. But I think most importantly, what is going to play the biggest part in this game is the weather, as we talked of. If there's more rain, more wind, more rubbishy stuff with muddy puddles everywhere like we seen last weekend. I think that's going to play into the Jaguars' hands. But don't discount this Highlanders pack, who historically have been very, very good at dominating games up front. But against a team that is packed full of Argentinian internationals, I think even the best of Super Rugby sides will struggle to play that style of game against the best of the best from Argentina. That is going to be the killer is the weather but can the Highlanders do the job in the pouring rain? Remember, they play under a roof. They don't see rain at home anymore. I don't even think they've played hardly in a rainy match, let alone the mud puddles that the Jaguars and the Bulls seen last weekend. So that could be a big, big telling difference. The Jaguars would instantly become my favorites in that kind of weather, which could really throw turmoil into this New Zealand conference and overall wildcard spots in the Australasian group. My final result, though, is going to be with the Highlanders. I think they're going to win it, but I think it's going to be pretty close. I do hope it is close. I enjoy watching the Jaguars and the Highlanders play, and my final score is going to be 38-33. The Highlanders to take it by just five points. It's going to be a great match. The crowd, I expect, will be absolutely buzzing, and the Highlanders will have a tough ass to do it against a confident and hopefully enthusiastic Jaguars side. All right, that wraps up my preview for round 16. There are some cracking matches in there, so if you hear anyone say that they're not interested in what happens in Super Rugby this weekend, be sure to slap them around the chops for me and say this game this weekend is going to be massive because so much could change. The repercussions of wins and losses will be huge. Now, before I go, remember to get your picks in for this weekend's games as well. And whoever does beat me, you'll get the highest score out of everyone who predicts. We'll, of course, get a special mention next week when we take a look at the review of this weekend's matches. So get your picks in. Who you think is going to do the best? Who's going to win? Who's going to lose? The margins, of course, what the points going to be scored are. And we'll have a look at those next week in the review. But for now, thanks for tuning and watching. Hope you've enjoyed. Hope this helps you out if you're tipping this weekend as well. And I'll see you all next time. Until then, take care.